This is Narol Barad camp, where Amina and Mahmoud used to live. Militants who sympathize with Al-Qaeda based themselves here last year, and in March they attacked a Lebanese army checkpoint. The army responded by shelling the camp. Thousands of Palestinian civilians fled with nothing but the clothes on their back. Refugees from a refugee camp. Sixty years after they arrived, the 400,000 Palestinian refugees in Lebanon remain non-citizens and they're forbidden from owning property. Despite being born and bred in Lebanon, these children are raised on the belief that one day they'll go home. The fighting between the Lebanese army and Fatah al-Islam is now entering its third week. Today, uh, the fighting is quite intense, the most it's been for quite a few days. The Lebanese army has vowed to finish off this group within the next two days. But the problem is that I've just spoken to the Red Cross and apparently there are still 5,000 Palestinian refugees trapped inside the camp, people who can't get out. Perhaps they're sick, perhaps they're elderly. So the problem of what's going to happen to these 5,000 Palestinians still remains to be seen. It's almost impossible to find out what's happening inside Nahr el Barad. More than 80 Lebanese soldiers have died in the fighting, and the army refuses to let reporters film anywhere near the camp. Last week, the army distributed footage of its soldiers attacking the Narol Barad camp. Now, these soldiers are trying to prove they can defend their homeland. Washington has been quick to respond with political and military support, sending millions of dollars worth of ammunition and other supplies. يعني ما كان يستهدف فقط مطوع المواقع العسكرية كان يستهدف كل المخيم بشكل كامل وبدون أي تفرقة بين مدني وبين عسكر هل من القانون أنك تعاقب جماعة فتح إسلام في مخيم الباب في أربعين ألف نسمة باعترافات هن ميتين فتح إسلام is only 200 فتح إسلام only 200 وفلسطيني أربعين ألف 40,000 من من نهر الباب هل بتعاقب أربعين ألف بسبب ميتين شخص؟ كانوا هني بموجودين في في قواعد مغلقة يعني إحنا كما كمدنيين كان محضور علينا إنه حتى نقترب من من أماكن تواجدهم. How did you know which people were Fatah al-Islam and which weren't? طبعاً من كنا نميزهم من لباسهم لباسهم مختلف عن لباسنا اللباس الإسلامي الباكستاني أو الأفغاني وطبعاً شعرهم الطويل ولحاهم. Today, the Lebanese army has agreed to stop shelling long enough for the Red Cross to pick up more civilians. What happened? What happened? Uh, it's very difficult to, uh, to say what happened. They said that they are God, as a Muslim, that they are God, and they are the Lord of the Lord. They took the support and they got to the government of the United States. يضرب الثاني كل واحد يضرب الثاني نضرب ضرب ضرب صار يعني سكرونا سكر أنا بطلت أسمع آخر شيء نضرب ضربونا ضرب شديد يعني هذا الضرب حياتنا ما شفنا وكأنه حقد حقد كبير بعدين عاد عن هيك بدنا نيك الصغير والكبير من الفلسطيني أي واحد فلسطيني ومنه مرتك وأختك ولا كمين وأكيد الشعب الفلسطيني لأن ذبيحك تذبيح These are the Fatah al-Islam fighters in Nahr al-Barad. The government has known about their presence in the camp for months, and in March, the militants were even interviewed on Lebanese television. Palestinians say the government could have dealt with the militants without waging war on Nahr al-Barad. 
And many have even wondered if the Sunni-dominated government turned a blind eye to Fatah al-Islam because it too is Sunni. Last Friday, the anger of the Palestinian refugees boiled over. <laughs> Fed up with the conditions at Badawi, they decided to hold a protest and demand they be allowed to return to Nahr al barad despite the fighting. When they marched towards a Lebanese army checkpoint, the soldiers opened fire. Three people were killed and around 30 were injured. Who shot at you?